It is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Ernesto Marin Maurice, who is our speaker today for this webinar. We are in Nigeria uh, and the uh, power just went out. Professor Ernesto Marin took his PhD in physical sciences from Uni Universidad de Lo Habana, Cuba. Is currently the Cook Professor of National Polytechnic Institute, Center for Research in Applied Science and Advanced Technology, Mexico. Dr. Ernesto Marin is a good researcher and teacher. He is also a member of the Mexican Academy of Sciences and National Researcher System Level 3 by 3 of the National Council of Science and Technology of Mexico. He has taught several undergraduates and graduate courses in applied physics is the author of four patents, more than 200 original research articles, five book chapters, a publisher of a book, and has advised seven undergraduates, 21 masters, and 18 PhD theses. He has more than 2,000 citations to his, research, uh, to his research papers, an H index of 25, and an I-10 index of 80, according to Academic Google. He has received several awards for the best thesis of his students, the 2000 Annual Award of the Cuban Academy of Sciences, the 2000 Annual Distinction of the Minister of Higher Education of the Republic of Cuba, and the 2011 and 2013 Research Award of the National Polytechnic Institute, Mexico. His research, his research interests include photothermal phenomena and techniques and applications, photoacoustic, pyroelectric and thermal lenses calorimetry, active infrared thermography, measurement of thermal properties, optical and photothermal spect spectroscopies, detection of traces of contaminants in water and air, and remediation of ecosystems subsurface imaging and measurement of quantum efficiencies. On behalf of all the members of RIOS, I welcome you, Professor, to this webinar, and also welcome all the invited guests and participants to the webinar. A humble request, please, to all participants. All are requested to keep their microphones muted to the end of the webinar. After the talk, time will be given for interaction with our distinguished speaker. Also, all you should all please to take care not to present your screen in between. Link for generating certificates and providing feedback will be given at the end of the webinar. You are all kindly requested to complete the feedback form as well. Now I kindly request Professor Ernesto Marin Maurice to begin this pre the presentation. Professor, you have the floor. Thanks again for, for the nice introduction, introduction and to the shy persons for the keen invitation to give this talk. As a brief uh, self-introduction, I am originally from Cuba, but during the last 20 years, I have been doing research and teaching in Mexico City at the Research Center in Applied Science and Advanced Technology of the National Polytechnic Institute of Mexico. Uh, this is one of the greatest public universities in this country. There we do research mainly on applications of photothermal techniques and their applications. Uh, this, slide, this slide shows some of the experimental facilities available in our laboratory. And in this talk, I will talk to you about photoacoustic spectroscopy and thermal lens spectroscopy. This is a brief summary of my presentation. Uh, in the introduction, I will define what I mean with complex samples, and I will do a comparison between conventional optical spectroscopy and photothermal spectroscopies. Then I will tell you about photoacoustic spectroscopy. Uh, I, I will show what the photoacoustic effect is. 
I will make a little bit of history about uh, the discovery of this effect. I will talk to you about the basics behind the photoacoustic spectroscopy technique and a typical experimental setup. And uh, I, I will describe one application for the spectroscopic characterization of multilayer samples. Uh, before the conclusion, I will tell you about the transient thermal lens spectroscopy technique in the dual beam mode mismatched configuration. I will describe our experimental setup, the basic theory behind the technique, and some applications for uh, the determination of quantum yields uh, in complex samples. Let us Consider a sample on which a beam of light impinges with power P O. This beam will be partially reflected and transmitted through the sample. The associated powers will be named here P R and P T respectively. But the fraction of the absorbed energy will be transformed into heat with an associated power pH. Optical spectroscopy is based in comparing the transmitter power with the incident power. And to record a, an optical absorption spectrum. A, this optical absorption spectrum can be represented in different ways. For example, a, as the absorbance as a function of the wavelength of the photons. Uh, the, the absorbance is related with the optical absorption coefficient, but can also be related with the molar extinction coefficient so that this spectrum can be represented in different ways. But, but uh, uh, when we have a, a a, a very opaque sample, then the transmitted power will be zero. And when we have a very transparent, a very optical transparent sample, then the transmitted and the incident power will be very similar so that the conventional optic spectroscopy have limitations. A, a sample a, can also show other processes such as light scattering and luminescence yeah and and the, the presence of, of this phenomena also can also affect an optical absorption spectrum recorded in a conventional way the photothermal techniques it uh, looks at the at the uh, heat generated in the sample so that it uh, they can overcome some of the uh, mentioned limitation of conventional techniques. Uh, I, I will talk to you about two of these uh, photothermal techniques. Uh, the first one will be the photoacoustic technique that is based in the effect having the same name, the photoacoustic effect. Uh, to describe the, the photoacoustic effect, I can propose you to make this uh, experiment that you can perform at home. What, uh, what you need for this experiment is a stethoscope and a, a, a filament bulb dri dri driven by alternate co current. Yeah? When you put the the heat of the stethoscope near the the bulb you will hear a bit uh, modulated by the uh, line frequency for example uh, 60 hertz uh, here in mexico and, and 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 this effect can be explained in the following way it, this is a schema of the stethoscope heat. The, the diaphragm of the of the stethoscope plays the function of a sample. When 
uh, a light beam with modulated intensity is absorbed by the di diaphragm, a, a heat is generated. And, 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 and this heat it, it propagates to the ear inside the stethoscope heat and heats a, a thin layer of, of, of the enclosed air adjacent to the, uh, to the diaphragm. Because the, the periodical heating, this a thin layer of, of gas will expand and contract uh, acting as a piston, as a gas piston on the rest of the gas enclosed in, 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 the, te in the stethoscope uh, and generating an acoustical wave that propagates through the hearing tube uh, uh, as a sound. Yeah? Then there are some uh, mechanisms involved in, in the generation of, of the signal. The first mechanism is the is light absorption that depends on the optical properties of the sample, here the, the, the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Then a process of energy conversion. Light energy is converted into heat by a process that is characterized by different properties independence of the of the material uh, but one of the characteristic properties of this process is the uh, light into heat conversion efficient then the generated uh, the generated heat uh, diffuse through the systems in a process governed by the thermal properties of, of the of the material yeah and lastly uh, some waves are produced that uh, are related with the elastic properties of the sample and and these mechanisms and the properties involved in them are the the the, the cause that this effect can be used for materials characterization the photoacoustic effect was discovered by alexander graham bell who is well known uh, um, by his work uh, with the telephone. When, when discovering the, the photoacoustic effect, uh, Bell was working in an instrument naming, named by him the photophone, uh, with, with uh, he tried to transmit information at long distance using light anticipating uh, the the optical communication uh, communications that we have today uh, working on, on on this effect bell discovered that when modulate intensity modulated light impinges on, on a solid sample a song is generated and using this experiment, named the spectrophone, uh, uh, with which uh, uh, he can uh, change the, the color, the wavelength of the light, Bell discovered that, it, that, that the, the intensity of the sound depends on, on the wavelength of the light, so that he associated the phenomenon to a light absorption process. The photoacoustic effect was also investigated by important scientists uh, of the 18 uh, of the 19th century. For example, Röntgen uh, uh, discovered that uh, the photoacoustic effect can also be produced by the absorption of infrared radiation by gases. And, and this uh, uh, discovery is the, the basis of one of the most expanded uh, application of the photoacoustic effect today. 
Uh, today, the photoacoustic effect uh, is used uh, for the detection of trace levels of different molecules present in, in gases. Uh, this is a typical experimental setup. You have a closed cell uh, where the, 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 the gas under analysis can be introduced and a, a, a laser beam tuned at the absorption energy of the uh, molecule of interest is uh, passed through, through, the, through the sample. Uh, the, the light energy is absorbed by the molecule and in a way similar as the photoacoustic effect, a, a photoacoustic signal is produced that can be detected with a microphone or already uh, enclosed uh, in the cell. Uh, typical applications are for the determine, for the monitoring of air pollution, uh, uh, for the uh, characterization of, of different molecules pre present in exhaled air to detect different disease, and for the monitoring, for example, of fluid and maturation processes uh, through the the measurement of the a rate of, of, of emission of different characteristic gases, such as ethylene. The, the photoacoustic effect in solids it was rediscovered uh, in the 1970s uh, by principal, by, by Alan Rosenway. Uh, uh, Alan Rosenway, working in the Bell Laboratories in the United States, uh, uh, published the, 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 uh, an article with the first uh, theoretical uh, model describing the photoacoustic effect in solids. And also in an article published in Physics Today, uh, described the first applications uh, of the effect, mainly for optical spectroscopy in condensed matter samples. The photoacoustic spectroscopy technique is based in thermal wave physics. Uh, thermal wave physics describe the temperature field generated in a sample after the absorption of intensity modulated radiation. And, and, and only the, the oscillatory part of this temperature field is of interest for the photoacoustic technique. Here I, I show the oscillatory part of the, of the temperature field for two different modulation frequencies of the of the excitation light. And what I want to, to show you is that the amplitude of these oscillations decrease, uh, increase uh, when the, the, the modulation frequency, frequency uh, is reduced. And a, a phase shift appears that, that depends on the modulation a frequency. If we consider an ideal semi-infinite solid with a periodical superficial heat source, I mean with ideal and homogeneous isotropic solid, uh, the, the heat source is uniform so that a, a one-dimensional approach is valid, etc. Uh, for, for this sample, uh, when we solve the heat diffusion uh, equation uh, with a periodical heat source at the surface, we obtain this solution for the alternating component of the temperature field. Uh, the, the form, the mathematical form of this equation, remember us, uh, and a damping, a, a damp, damped wave, yeah? Uh, it has an amplitude, uh, showing here with yellow color, 
and, and, and phase shift. Yeah. And both depends on this parameter, name it the thermal diffusion length that depends on the uh, modulation frequency of, of the light. When the modulation frequency is increased, the, the thermal diffusion length uh, is reduced. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and varying the, the, the modulation frequency, uh, it, it, we can uh, control the, the length at which the thermal wave propagates through the sample. And this opens the way for application, for depth profiling applications, such as the, the application that I will show you uh, later. Uh, in this equation are involved two thermal parameters. One is the thermal diffusivity that is related to the thermal conductivity and the specific heat through this equation where rho is the mass density and the other parameter is the thermal effusivity. It is the, the, the quotient of thermal conductivity and the square root of the thermal diffusivity. Uh, as we can see in the expression, the thermal effusivity controls the value, the value of the amplitude of the wave at the sample surface, uh, while the thermal diffusivity controls the damping because it is involved in the uh, thermal diffusion length parameter. Uh, here I, I, I show you the, the behavior of the amplitude of, of this equation with the distance. And we can see that the wave is uh, highly attenuated within approximately uh, six times the thermal diffusion length. And this value is uh, approximately the wavelength of this uh, thermal wave. Thermal wave physics is not new. Uh, also in in the in the 19th century, uh, uh, Fourier, in his classical work, the analytical theory of heat, uh, predicted the existence of these waves. So that a thermal wave physics, uh, as the photoacoustic technique, are a rediscovery of a 19th century uh, uh, experiments by the uh, modern science. When instead of, of a superficial heat source, we have a, a heat source distributed across the sample due to optical absorption, uh, then we obtain another expression where the optical absorption coefficient, the optical reflection coefficient, and the photothermal quantum yield are involved. No? And, 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 well, here, in, in, in this expression, Q uh, is a complex number uh, depending on the thermal diffusion length. And uh, the, the most important fact uh, in this case is that the, the signal depends on the product of the optical absorption coefficient that depends on the light wavelength and the thermal diffusion length that depends on the light modulation frequency. Uh, so that, uh, I, uh, and this is different as what happens in, in, in conventional optical spectroscopy, where we measure the absorbance that is proportional to the product of the optical absorption coefficient and the sample thickness. Uh, this dependence uh, of the product of beta and mu uh, allows to obtain information behind the surface of the sample, the characterization of layered structures, etc. This is a typical setup for photoacoustic spectroscopy. 
uh, this is a photograph of the, the setup uh, at our laboratory, and it consists basically in a, a white light source, for example, a high pressure Xenon lamp, a, a monochromator to select different wavelengths. We have an optical chopper to modulate the intensity of the light, and the, the modulated light beam is focused on, to, on the sample enclosed in a photoacoustic cell. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this is an example. This is the photoacoustic cell. This is the sample. And uh, there is a, a microphone coupled to the cell to detect the sound wave generated in the, in the air surrounding the, the sample. The, the photoacoustic signal has a very a small signal to noise ratio. Uh, this is because the generated temper temperature uh, variations are very small of the order of some milli kelvins, uh, so that they do not modify the, the, the properties that, that we will uh, measure that depend on the, of course, on the temperature. Um, um, because this very small signal to noise ratio, we need an instrument to, to measure the, the signal, of, to extract the, the signal of interest from a, a very noisy uh, environment. And this instrument is a locking amplifier. The locking amplifier allows to measure both the amplitude and the phase shift of the photoacoustic signal. The, 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 an application, the application that I will show now is uh, related to the characterization of the following systems. The sample consists on a glass substrate with a, a cadmium sulfide thin layer uh, deposited in it, on it, and then a cadmium telluride layer on the CDS. Uh, this is a typical structure used in solar cells uh, and, and other photovoltaic elements. This is the, the scheme of the structure. The, the substrate is a soda lime glass with one millimeter thickness. The, say, the cadmium sulfide layer has six micrometer and, and the energy gap is about 2.4 electron volt. Uh, the corresponding wavelength is 500 uh, 17 nanometers and, and the cadmium telluride layer has a thickness greater than 400 nanometer uh, the band gap is about 1.49 electron volt equivalent to 832 nanometers uh, and, and here is I, I show you the 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 optical tramitance spectrum obtained by conventional optical spectroscopy uh, what we, we see here is that the optical tramitance technique can only detect the band gap associated with the cadmium telluride uh, material. Uh, this is because uh, that when, when the, the, the photons uh, uh, energy are uh, is, uh, lower than the, the band gap energy of, of the cadmium uh, telluride, the, 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 the optical tramitance goes to zero yeah, because the, 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 the material is opaque to the, to the optical radiation and above the band gap, uh, the, the optical uh, tramitance enhance. Now I will show you a, a result of a photoacoustic 
eh, spectroscopy experiments done on the same sample. The, the configuration of the measurement uh, is shown in this scheme. Uh, uh, the sample is illuminated through the glass substrate uh, and on the candon telluride layer, a thin uh, graphite layer is deposited. Yeah? The, the photoacoustic chamber is uh, face the, the the glass substrate. Now, now when when the when the here is a scheme, is an scheme of the of the of the band gap of the molten materials. Uh, when when the 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 photons energy uh, is smaller than the band gap energy of the two materials. Is smaller than 1.49 electron volt, and then the whole material is transparent to the radiation, but the, the radiation will be absorbed by the graphite layer because the, the, the photoacoustic signal is normalized by the signal measured in, in the same graphite layer, then for these values of the of the photons energy, the the photoacoustic amplitude will be near the unite. Yeah. But when 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 we we when when the photons energy uh, increase, then the 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 photons will be absorbed by, by the calcium sulfide layer, and the generated heat will propagate. Uh, through the, the glass to the photoacoustic gas, cha uh, gas chamber. Uh, and, and in this way, we, we we obtain not only information about the band gap of the candon telluride layer, but also uh, on the light absorption processes taking place in the uh, candon sulfide material and within the intermediated layer uh, that can be formed between the two semiconductor uh, materials. Uh, and, and, and this is observed in, in this absorption band uh, uh, here. Uh, in, in this technique, we, we can use a one method to separate the contributions of the two absorbing optical absorbing samples present in the sample this method is named the phase resolver method due to time uh, space uh, i cannot go here in the details of this method but when we apply this method we can we can uh, recover the contribution of the two materials to the photoacoustic spectrum and we can see that at, at higher wavelengths the, the cadmium telluride uh, material, or the, the absorption by the cadmium telluride material is predominant, while at lower frequencies, uh, the, the cadmium sulfide layer plays a more important role. Because in photoacoustic spectroscopy, the sample is enclosed in a cell. Uh, when dealing with liquid samples, there can be problems because uh, mainly uh, the, the evaporation of volatile species present in the liquid. And, and, and in this case, uh, another photothermal spectroscopy technique, named the, the, the thermal length spectroscopy technique, can be uh, the uh, one useful alternative. This is a, a, a typical a experimental setup of the thermal lens, of the transient thermal lens spectroscopy technique. This technique is not based in thermal wave physics as the photoacoustic uh, spectroscopy technique. Uh, the, the, the experiment uh, can be briefly described as follows. We have an excitation light beam 
uh, the, the wavelength of this light beam will, uh, must be selected so that it matches the absorption ratio of the sample. This light beam is focused uh, onto a small region on the sample. Uh, and due to the absorption of optical energy, uh, the, the material is heated up. And, and as a consequence, the refractive index of the sample will be changed. And this causes a change in the intensity of another laser beam that passed through the same illuminated region of the sample. This intensity can be recorded at the far field with a photodiode uh, to measure the, the time evolution of the uh, of the thermal wave of the sorry of the thermal length signal. Uh, this is a a, a typical uh, a thermal length signal as recorded in in the oscilloscope when the uh, excitation beam is on uh, the, uh, uh, the the signal. Uh, the, the thermal length signal appears and uh, it changes with, with time uh, until a, a constant value is obtained. This is a value of the of the of the probing intensity recorded by the photodiode. And this is a photograph of our experimental setup. Uh, here is the excitation laser. It is an uh, argon uh, to enable uh, argon laser, and, and here is the the probe laser. Uh, it is a, a, a gaseous helium neon uh, laser. The 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 most accepted model to describe the change with time of the probing intensity is due to Chen and co-workers. Uh, th this is a, a, a typical signal evolution. Uh, initially, we have the, the probe beam intensity. When the excitation beam is on set, uh, the, the intensity of the probe beam be begin, began to, be begin to, to change with time until a saturation or constant value is, is obtained. Uh, this time decay has a characteristic time that depends on the sample uh, uh, that we investigated. The, the, the time evolution, uh, evolution uh, of, of the intensity is described by, by this equation. E0 is the, the intensity when the pump laser is off. Uh, here, delta and gamma. Uh, are uh, and epsilon are uh, geometrical parameters uh, depending on the, the experimental serut. They depend on the diameter of the pump and the and the probe lasers, on the the the, 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 the distance involved in the experimental serut and so on. They are optical geometrical parameters that that can be measured. Uh, precisely in, in the experiments. A TC is a, a characteristic time for the formation of the thermal length signal that depends on the radius of the excitation beam at the sample position and on the thermal diffusivity of the material. And theta is a, a parameter that depends on the uh, photothermal parameter. Uh, this is the the temperature coefficient of the refractive index of the sample, on the thermal conductivity of the sample, on the wavelength of the probe beam, on the power absorbed by the sample, and on the photothermal quantum yield, that is the, the quotient of the generated heat and the absorbed power by the sample. Uh, the, the absorbed power, uh, 
is, is the difference uh, between the incident power and the transmitted power. And the transmitted power can be expressed by the Lambert Bird law, uh, uh, where beta is the, the optical absorption coefficient and L is the sample thickness. Uh, using uh, these expressions, uh, the, the parameter theta ca can be expressed as a function of the incident power by this expression. The dependence of the of the of the parameter theta on the photothermal quantum yield opens the way uh, for applications related to the measurement of this and other quantum yields. For example, the scattering uh, quantum yield or the fluorescence quantum yield when the samples experiment uh, this phenomena. For example, uh, the when we have a, a turbine media uh, where elastic scattering is important, the, the quantum yield of scattering can be defined as the quotient of the number of scattered photons per time unit and the number of incident photons per time unit on the sample. And, and using uh, energy conservation, uh, uh, one can demonstrate that the scattering quantum yield can be expressed by the following expression. Here, T is the sample stramitans, pH is the generated heat in the sample that can be obtained from the theta parameter in the thermal lens experiments, and P0 is the incident power that can be measured uh, easily with a, a photodiode. Uh, it is worth to say that the, the theta parameter can be obtained by fitting the, the, the intensity versus time curve, the theoretical exp uh, expression, leaving theta and, and the characteristic time uh, as adjustable parameters. And because the characteristic time depends on the thermal diffusivity, uh, the determination of the thermal diffusivity is a, a way to, uh, to, to know that the experiment is uh, well performed if the, the thermal diffusivity of the, of the material is known. In the case of fluorescence, the, the, the quantum yield is described as the number of, of uh, emitted photons per time unit and the number of absorbed photons per time unit by the sample. And uh, it is given by the following expression. It is related to the photothermal quantum yield that can be determined by the thermal length technique. Uh, lambda is the excitation wavelength and uh, this is the average wavelength uh, that can be calculated from the emission spectrum of the sample. Th this quantum yield uh, uh, can be uh, measured uh, only at a single wavelength, but its determination, uh, its uh, uh, the independence with the wavelength can be of interest for several applications. Uh, so that it is important to record not only the quantum yield at one specific wavelength, but also of the quantum yield spectra. This is a, a, the experimental setup that can be used for, for, for this application. It is the same as that uh, showed be, uh, before, but the excitation laser is substituted by a white light uh, emitting lamp and a set of interference filters to select different wavelengths. Uh, recently, uh, we substituted the interference filters by a monochromator in our laboratory, and, and this had so, has some advantages, for example, for the automatization of, of the measurements. Using this experimental setup, uh, some years before we, uh, in collaboration with Professor Aristides Marcano of the Delaware University, we measured the scattering quantum yield spectra of some samples. Here is an example 
of a malachite green oxalate sample uh, uh, in, in water, dissolved in, in, in water. Here I show the optical absorption spectrum, well, the, the extinction coefficient uh, spectrum as a function of the wavelengths determined by optical, by conventional optical spectroscopy. It is a continuous line. And the points are the, the optical extinction coefficient as determined by the thermal lens, by the transient thermal lens technique. And in, in the second part of the picture, uh, I show you what happens when some polyesterine microbeads uh, are added to the sample. Uh, these microbeads have a mean diameter of 200 nan uh, nanometers. Uh, and we perform the experiment at different uh, uh, concentrations. Uh, what we can see here is that uh, while the thermal lens uh, uh, optical spectrum uh, is not modified by, by the addition of the microbeds, the optical absorption spectrum uh, changes because the light, elastic light scattering effect. And this is another example for a methylene blue uh, in water sample. Uh, uh, here we can see uh, how uh, the, the optical spectrum is modified by the presence of the microbit uh, 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 spheres. And, and using the model that I uh, showed uh, before, uh, for these samples, we determined the spectrum of the scattering quantum yield uh, for these samples. Uh, here is for the malachite green in water sample and here for the methylene blue sample. And I can show you also the, the result obtained for a blood, for a wool blood sample. Uh, here is also the, the comparison of the optical measurement uh, with the photothermal uh, ones. And here is the quantum yield of scattering spectrum of, of blood. Uh, and, uh, another application is the, the determination of the quantum yield of fluorescence, of the, of the spectrum of the quantum yield of fluorescence and, and here I show you the, the results we obtained for a, a, a CF 800 dye. This is a dye produced by Piotium, uh, dissolved in water at the concentration uh, of 1.88 ppm. Uh, th this dye has a strong light absorption and emission in the near infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum so that to measure the the quantum yield of fluorescence we needed a, a source emitting in this wavelength range and so we used a tunable a laser oscillator that we have in our laboratory this is a femtoseconds laser, a high repetition femtoseconds laser, the, the, the frequency uh, of the emission is 80 megahertz, and this laser is to enable in the range between 710 and, 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 and 1000 nanometers approximately. Uh, and here I show you with the squares is the, the optical absorption spectrum obtained by optical spectroscopy. The circles are the, the, the optical absorbance determined by the thermal lens spectroscopy technique. And in red, we have the, the fluorescence spectrum in arbitrary units. And, and, and using uh, these results and the uh, formulas that are presented before, we determined the, the, the spectrum of the quantum yield for this sample that is shown in, in, in this picture. 
uh, we see that that uh, in this case the the quantum uh, yield is very small and and this is due to the fact that in the emission ratio of 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 this uh, dye a uh, water have also a, a very high optical absorption so that the luminescence is quenched by the reabsorption of the photons emitted by the dye by by the the water uh, matrix uh, and this uh, result also the the the, the the qualitative form of the uh, absorbance spectrum determined by both techniques uh, and the values obtained for the for the quantum yield of fluorescence uh, agree with results reported before for other samples such as rhodamine etc as my conclusions Photothermal spectroscopy is a, is a very useful a tool for applications related to the characterization of complex samples. For example, very opaque and very optical transparent samples, and those that, in addition to, to light transmission and absorption, uh, experience a phenomena such as uh, luminescence, uh, elastic light scattering, and so on. Uh, however, photothermal spectroscopy is still a uh, uh, unknown technique for many people. Uh, photoacoustic spectroscopy uh, is a very useful uh, photothermal technique for characterizing a very opaque samples. And, and one important application is depth profiling. Uh, but has some limitations uh, when dealing with liquid samples. In this case, the thermal lens spectroscopy technique uh, becomes the, the option of choose. Uh, some advantage of this technique is the minimal samples volume uh, required, the easy samples loading and removal. It is a non-contact and optical method so that it is a non-invasive uh, technique. The, the results of the technique uh, can be interpreted in a relative easy way. And, and, and this technique offers a, an absolute method for quantum efficiency uh, determination. Uh, absolute because uh, we don't need a reference sample uh, as is the case, for example, when integrating spheres uh, are used in conventional optical spectroscopy to measurement of these uh, parameters. Uh, before concluding, I will thank the former and present collaborators and students and the organization that uh, support uh, or work with financial resources. And of course, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.